In this unit, I'll talk about fixed points and stability, two important concepts that we'll use throughout the course. But first, I should mention that iterated functions are an example of a dynamical system. And the course is about dynamical systems, so this is important, so I should say what dynamical systems are. And I'll come back to this again, but for now, dynamical system is a system that evolves forward in time according to a well-defined and unchanging rule. And that's what we have with iterated functions. So we have a value, a number, that moves forward, changes from iterate to iterate, according to a well-defined rule. That's the function, a nice deterministic function. The same input gives the same output every time. And the rule doesn't change as we iterate. We're just doing the same thing over and over again, using the output of one step for the input of the next. So iterated functions are a dynamical system. In the study of dynamical systems, we're often not particularly interested in the numbers of a particular orbit or itinerary. Instead, we're interested in understanding uh, collections of orbits, many orbits, all at once. And more generally, would like to understand what sort of behavior uh, do we see in different types of dynamical systems. So this is the approach we'll take in this course, and we'll start that in this unit when we look at fixed points and stability. Let's start with an example. We'll consider again the squaring function, f of x equals x squared. We know how to calculate an orbit for this function. We just start with a number, the seed. In this case, I chose 1.1. And then we square, square to get the next iterate, 1.21. We square that to get 1.46, and so on. We could choose a different seed, and we would get a different orbit. Let's say instead of 1.1, I chose 1.2. I'd do the same thing, square again and again to get that orbit. So here's the orbit for the seed 1.2. Note that both orbits get larger. When you square a number larger than 1, the number gets larger. So these numbers will continue to grow. Let's try another one. Suppose I chose a seed of 0 0.9. I'll put 0 0.9 here. What will happen? Well, let's apply the function and see. For this initial condition, the number gets smaller. It's getting closer and closer to 0. If you square a number between 0 and 1, it gets smaller, not larger. Let's try one more initial condition, one more seed. I'll try 0 0.8, and I'll square again and again to get the orbit. So again, when we square a number that's between 0 and 1, it gets smaller. Here we can see the number is getting closer and closer to 0. So calculating the orbit, a, a particular orbit for a particular seed, is not too difficult. It just requires a little bit of calculator work. But it doesn't let us uh, get a sense of the big picture. What does this function do? So um, we'll use some graphical techniques that'll help us see this better and understand the function all at once. First, let me plot the time series plots. Let me show you the time series plots for these four orbits. 1.1, 1.2, they get bigger. 0 0.9, 0 0.8, they get smaller. So here's the time series plot for that. You can see I have four different initial conditions, a square, a diamond, uh, sorry, square, a triangle, a circle, and a diamond. The square, that's 1.2. We can see that growing quite fast. It goes off the graph. The triangles are 1.1. Those grow. The circles are 0 0.9, and those are getting close to 0. And then 0 0.8 also gets close to 0. So this lets us see that numbers larger than 1 will um, get larger and larger, and numbers between 0 and 1, we suspect, will get closer and closer to 0. Uh, 